Well, good morning, folks. It's good to see you all here this morning, and uh, for any watching online, I bid you a warm welcome as well. Uh, just one or two notices to draw your attention to. Uh, first of all, I remind you of our evening service as usual at half past six this evening, and our prayer time then will be at the conclusion uh, of our evening service. Uh, on Tuesday evening, we uh, restart our midweek uh, Bible study this time, and we're on Zoom this Tuesday evening at eight o'clock. I send out the questions for the discussion later on uh, this evening. Uh, so can I encourage you to, to join in uh, with the, the midweek meetings if you've done so in the past and then haven't been able to for a while. New Year's a, a good time to restart or if you haven't been in before we'd, we'd love to have your fellowship uh, with us on uh, Tuesday evenings. Uh, you remember the elders here as we meet this Thursday uh, to look over reports before our annual general meeting which takes place, God willing, on Tuesday the, the 31st of this month. Um, remind you then of the um, Equip to Leads series that our college is hosting. Some of these cards on the table uh, for you to, to see the details of that and please make use of that. And then also come in this week um, the a yearly uh, conference, the weekend conference, the details of that to hand. Reverend Gareth Burke's the speaker this year, that's the 17th to the 19th of March. And not go through all the details, but there are a number of these uh, forms on the table in the entrance way you can take and, and look at. That's the uh, weekend conference, the 17th to the 19th. Well, we gather to worship God, and our opening psalm of praise this morning reminds us of the God. When we come to praise and adore, he's a God who draws near to his people. He's the God who gives strength to his people. Uh, he's the God who is right there with his people in all the changing situations of life. The psalmist says in verse 6, The Lord of hosts is on our side. Our safety to secure. The God of Jacob is for us a refuge strong and sure. And what wonderful truths to worship and praise and give thanks to God for. Psalm 46 we sing these opening six verses to God's praise. God is our refuge and our strength. Jesus Christ to bring to you our worship and our praise. We acknowledge that you are the great mighty God, the sovereign Lord of all. 
You are the God in whom we live and move and have our being. You are the God who has appointed all things. You have governed all of the history of this world. And you will do so, Lord, right throughout time. We thank you for that great over underlying theme of your governing and sovereign uh, plans over all things for the building of your church, for the gathering in of that great number that you, Heavenly Father, have given to your Son, for whom he paid the price for our redemption. And we rejoice that you have given to this world another Lord's Day when the good news of Jesus Christ will ring out throughout this earth. We rejoice that your spirits uh, will accompany the going forth of your word and will today in the hearts of many bring that word with life-changing power to bring life in Jesus Christ. And we bless you, Lord, for this great wonderful truth that you're the God of salvation, the God who has planned it, the God who has executed it in the coming of your Son, and the God who so graciously applies it in time. And Father, we gather rejoicing that we have found the words of our psalm to be the reality of our lives, that you've been the keeper of your people, that you've kept us as individuals in the past week, provided for us, that you've kept us in our families, and that you've preserved the church of Jesus Christ upon this earth. We thank you that there will always be a church of Christ in this earth to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. And we pray that we would know much of the working of his spirit in our hearts today as we sing these psalms, as we hear the word read and preached, that you would draw near to us. We come uh, deeply aware of our need, mighty God, conscious of our sinfulness, even in the hearts of your redeemed people. uh, We so often turn to the things that we don't wish to do. And Lord, we ask that your word would instruct us today and that your spirits would speak that word with power and effect into our hearts and lives. We ask, Lord, that you would bless all who've gathered here this morning. We pray that uh, you would meet with us. We pray for any who watch in online, not able to be here today, and we ask that you would have a Sabbath day's blessing for them also. We pray it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. <coughs> To write just three words on the board, but I'll do that on it. Just. Well, they're, they're pretty simple words. This word here is ask, and this word is seek, and this word is knock. Uh, I'm sure there are times at home for the boys and girls that you have to ask. Uh, Maybe there's something you need. Maybe your tummy's rumbling. And, uh, well, who would you ask? Who would you ask? You'd ask... Mummy. You'd ask Mummy, yeah, that'd be good. She probably knows where the things are. Yeah, and maybe Daddy too. You would would ask. You've got some need, and so you ask someone who can really help you. Uh, And this word here, seek, it means to, to look for something. Maybe you've lost your favorite toy. So what do you do? Do you, do you just have a quick look somewhere and then forget about it? No, you wouldn't. You would, you would keep looking, wouldn't you? Yeah. Until you find it. And this word here means to knock. Now listen to this knock. Uh, imagine this is a door. Pretend this is a door. And I'm going to knock in two different ways. That's one knock. And then listen, listen to this other knock. Okay, you've heard this one? And listen to this one. Imagine that with someone knocking at the door like that. They would be, they would be saying, I need help, wouldn't they? The difference between a little gentle knock and this ongoing knocking, I need help, come and help me. Well, these three words here we're going to be finding out about today. Jesus speaks to them about praying. Uh, and praying is like asking, asking God. Praying is like seeking, where we're wanting to find out something from God. And knocking is, oh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really uh, geared up for this, Lord, and I really need your help. And we're going to be finding out about that uh, today as when we're looking at verses 7 to 12. So you listen out, boys and girls, for these three words, words that Jesus 
spoke here in this passage, ask, seek, and knock. And they're all to do with praying. So we're going to read from verse 1, and we're going to read then on to, to verse 20 of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7, reading from verse 1. This is God's word. Judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Well, we're going to sing praise to God once more, uh, turning now to the words of Psalm 4. <clears throat> Many of the psalms themselves are the psalmist crying out or praying to the Lord. And this psalm begins with him uh, saying, Oh, give an answer when I call, God of my righteousness. Answer me, Lord, when I, when I call out to you of mercy, hear my prayer. You have relieved me in distress. These seven verses of Psalm 4 will sing to God's praise. Oh, give an answer. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing gift that sinners like us can bow our heads and ask you, the great mighty Lord of all the earth, for all that we need for this life's journey. Father, forgive us that though you have given us this great gift, that we do not delight in it, do not treasure it as much as we should. Will you pardon us, Heavenly Father? And again today, as we think of this amazing theme of sinners like us, asking, seeking and knocking for your attention, we pray that we be stirred up to be men and women who live their lives crying out to you. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, we're still in the Sermon on the Mount these Lord's Day mornings in our journey through Matthew's Gospel. The sermon that began back at uh, the beginning of chapter 5 and today uh, we're looking at chapter 7 from verses 7 uh, to 12. I've entitled this Heaven's Help. I have a friend uh, who is a retired major in the British Army and throughout his life he, uh, at one particular point of it, he was travelling across the world to uh, all sorts of different countries that uh, Britain had connection with and he was going out to train their soldiers <clears throat> and his particular area of expertise was in artillery combat uh, training men how to call in far power from on high so that they could make progress on the ground and I've often thought of uh, my friend uh, and going training uh, armies for that very solemn uh, task and reminded myself about how in the Bible uh, Christians are referred to as soldiers uh, and we're soldiers who are engaged in a battle not with uh, physical weapons like my friends was but uh, the Bible tells us that for the Christian there's a spiritual battle going on. Paul speaks in Ephesians 6 of how we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but we could this combat with all, this, all the powers of evil uh, that are around about us. And the Christian, just like an army in the battlefield, needs help from above. And this passage that we're looking at today, it is full of encouragement. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ today, these few verses are full of encouragement for you in your walk with the Lord. Heaven's help is at hand. We're coming towards the close of the Lord's famous Sermon on the Mount. You remember what this sermon's purpose was. Uh, Jesus wasn't going out on an evangelistic campaign at this stage, uh, preaching and uh, showing people the way into his kingdom. A great number of people had gathered around him to follow him. They had professed to be disciples. And he was giving them some in-service training, as it were. He was giving them teaching about how to, to live in his kingdom. He was saying to them, this is what should characterize your life. This is what the traits of your life should be like as you follow me. And today's portion in verses 7 to 12, the Lord Jesus was giving instructions to his disciples about praying. And he refers to praying, as I said before the reading, as asking, as seeking, and knocking. And as we look at these uh, few verses this morning, there, I want to draw your attention to, to three things as we reflect on this passage. And they are key for you as a follower of Jesus Christ. And uh, if someone's not yet a Christian and you're considering being a Christian, this is important for you to know as well. So three things this morning in this little paragraph. First of all, we're reminded of great need. Great need. I wonder, have you ever been given a task to do? And as soon as you began to do that task, you had that sinking feeling. 
I think this is just a little bit beyond me. Uh, when I was at school, for some weird reason, my family still laugh at this, I got put into the top class in maths. I have the foggiest notion how that happened. Uh, because just about counted a hundred is what I can manage. But I wasn't long in that class before I realised, oh, you are way out of your depth. I wonder, uh, in your work, uh, has someone come in to give you some instruction uh, about some new process that's about to unfold in your, in, your, in your work setting? And as you listen to the expert give the details, you thought, oh dear, this all sounds a bit beyond me. And you need to remember when you come to these words here that Jesus was speaking that they come towards the close of the in-service training of his disciples. And they had heard a, a, a great deal about how disciples were to live. And Jesus knew what their hearts were like. And he knew that for many of them, they were having that feeling that you can have in so many areas of life. Oh Lord, this just seems way beyond me. Maybe you've thought about that actually in these weeks that we've been looking at the Sermon on the Mount. Lord, I can't. Let me refresh your, your memory. You want, might want to flick the pages of your Bible. In chapter 5 when we began to look at this Sermon on the Mount, we saw those blessed statements uh, the Beatitudes, we call them. Uh, Jesus was spelling out the character of a real Christian, that they're humble, that they're broken by sin, that they're meek, that they're wanting more and more of God, that they're merciful, that they're pure in heart, that they're peacemakers. He gave this little snapshot. He, he, Jesus was saying, this is what my people are by grace. And this is what I want my people to be increasingly like. Did you think, oh dear, that sounds way beyond me. We saw in chapter 5 also that Jesus said that when his disciples are uh, doing battle with sin, it's not just like scrubbing some dirt off your arm. That sin is a deep inward thing and that we can, we can commit sins like murder and adultery in our hearts. And Jesus is saying, sort out your sin. He said in chapter 5, love your enemies. In chapter 6, he spelt out to his disciples that living the Christian life was, was utterly different from living a religious life. Religious people are just happy to do outward things so that others will notice. And Jesus said to his disciples, following me, you, you live your life understanding that, that the Father's eye is constantly upon you. We saw that great challenge in chapter 6 that we're not to waste our lives searching after the little trinkets and tinsel that the world goes after, but that we are to spend our lives laying up treasures in heaven. We heard the, the, the direct challenge of the Lord at the end of chapter 6, do not be anxious about anything, what you'll eat or drink or what you'll put on. We saw in chapter 7, uh, the last time we were looking at this in the, in the opening paragraph here, that the Lord was calling his disciples not to be, to be harsh and censorious, nor naive. And he'd tell them then in verse 12, and it's like a, verse 12 by the way, is like a bracket here in, in the Sermon on the Mount. He, he tells them the golden rule for, for living and following him. Whatever you would wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. He was saying to his disciples, do you want a little handle of how I want you to live? Well, imagine you could swap places with someone and live your life as, as you would want them to live their, their lives to you. So he, he's saying over and over in this uh, sermon to his disciples, living the Christian life is radically different. It's different from the world and the real Christian when they hear the Sermon on the Mount, will say, who is able for these things? 
course, the Christian says, this is who I want to be. Uh, the Christian says, Lord Jesus, I, I want these things to be in increasingly true of me. Not that I could earn your favour, uh, but that I could thank you for what you've done for me. I, I want to be all these things. But we also say to God, don't we? I've boiled with anger. I've worried myself sick. I've been harsh and judgmental. I've been far from meek. And the good that we want to do, we find that we don't do so often. And the things that we don't want to do, and paraphrasing the Apostle Paul here in Romans 7, we end up doing. <clears throat> And of your experience so far in the Sermon on the Mount has been, Oh Lord, I want all these things, but I fail you so often. If that's been your experience, that's a normal Christian experience. Also Paul in Romans 7 made that clear. So, that's the first thing to understand in coming to these verses. Our great need. We've got all these directions for kingdom living. And we say to the Lord, oh Lord I can't do this. And that's the, sec the second thing then leads on from that. And it's simply ask God. Ask God. You imagine a soldier at the front line of battle. What is that soldier glad of? Well, I'm sure that he or she will be glad that they've got a weapon to use. I'm sure that they'll be glad that they've got fellow soldiers around about them. I'm sure they'll be glad that they've a little bit of camouflage to hide at least a little bit from the enemy. And there'll be one other thing that every soldier is thankful for. That he's got his comms. That's so <coughs> My friend used to always talk about comms. I thought, what are you talking about? It's communications. The soldier is endlessly thankful that he's got a communication system. Without his radio, he'd not get any supplies for the battle. Their ammunition will run out, their fuel will run low, and their bellies will be empty. And this little paragraph here now, towards the end of this sermon, was to help the Christian soldiers. It was to help Christians realise that God in his great kindness has given us this amazing communications. And it's prayer. You see already he's spoken about prayer. We saw that back in chapter 6 from verse 9 to, to 14. He was giving his disciples some general teaching on prayer. He gave them a, a template to follow the Lord's Prayer. But now, he's not just going over something that he said before. He is making a specific application of this amazing blessing that God has given to his people that we can pray and ask God. The Lord Jesus was aware that his disciples... His, the genuine disciples would, at the sound of his, his directions for their lives, have a sense of defeat, of feel out of death. And the Lord is saying, I have put in place the communication system that you will need. I don't know, I didn't look it up, how much the British Army spends on uh, on its communications for its soldiers, I'm sure it, uh, it runs into millions. Well, this communication that Jesus Christ has put in place for his disciples, it cost him everything. You see, by nature, we, we can't call out to God. Our sin just separates us from God. Our sin is this huge barrier between us and God. And Jesus Christ is the only one who can remove that barrier of our sin. And he did that for all who believe in him by his death on the cross. So at great cost, he opened up this way. Now obviously in this little paragraph, there are general lessons for prayer. But the context of it, the setting of it, 
shows us what exactly Jesus is getting at here. And he's saying to the Christians, he's saying to all his people, there is help at hand for living the Christian life. You notice that at the end of this little section, he speaks about the good things. Uh, your Father who is in heaven will give good things to those who ask him. What are the good things? Well, the good things are all that he's been speaking about. The life that he calls us to live. And then now the Lord was assuring all of who are his followers, you can ask God. You can ask for heaven's help in your following of Jesus Christ. Here is this wonderful promise today for every Christian that help is at hand for the, the good living that we are called to live. The Lord Jesus is saying to his disciples, I, I know this is a tough call. I know these demands are great, but I have all that you need. And so our commanding officer, he gives his troops in the trenches these three commands. And the words ask and seek and knock are all stated there as commands. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Now just think of those words. Ask. The picture here is of a beggar. The picture here is of someone who's saying, Lord of myself, I have nothing to be able to do what you want me to do. And I'm coming like a beggar and I'm asking. I have no resources, but I know that you've got them all. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek, he commands his disciples. When you go to seek someone, something, you... you well, some people do put their whole heart into it. I'm the worst seeker imaginable. When things are lost, there's usually a cry. Goes out, Has anybody seen? And the cry comes back, have you looked? Well, I've looked as far as I usually look, maybe in one or two places. The, the word seek here is, is telling us that in our calling to God is to be a, a, an earnest uh, thing that we put our whole hearts into. You can imagine a soldier uh, when he's seeking the, the resources he needs for battle. Uh, will he be rather laid back about that? If he finds that his signal isn't strong in one place, as it were, will he just sit there and twiddle his thumbs? No, he, he'll go seeking where he can get the signal uh, clearly. Ask, seek, knock. Show to the children the idea behind this. This per persistence that we're saying to God, I need you. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, you don't have the resources of yourself, but I have them. My Father has them. So what, res what great resource have you got, Christian? Well, hasn't he sent his Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, to live in your life. And we need his enabling. Every moment of every day. Every day of our lives. Without him we can do nothing. Except the Lord build a house. Build our lives. We build in vain. Jesus says you have to ask. You have to seek. And you have to knock. For this heavenly assistance. Now we don't believe in our church. In a one off second blessing of God's spirit. Some Christians do believe that. If you have this second blessing. Well that will be your Christian life all sorted. It's not what the Bible says. But though, 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 though we don't believe in a, in a second blessing. We, we do believe in a second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth. Hundreds, thousands, millionth, enabling help of the Holy Spirit. And so we're to ask, we're to seek, and we're to knock. We're to tell him all that we need. Don Carson, Canadian 
preacher and commentator writes on this passage, listen to these perceptive uh, and clear words. Our low spiritual ebb is directly traceable to the flickering feebleness of our prayer. Isn't that searching? Our low spiritual ebb is directly traceable to the flickering feebleness of our prayer. So here we are at the beginning of a new year. And Christian, you can ask every day for fresh heavenly help. You boys and girls, and you've got this great command of Jesus for your life to honour your father and mother. Well, you can ask God every day, give me help, Lord Jesus, to be the, the boy or girl that you want me to be, to thank you for dying for me. You can ask him, and he give you that help. You young parents, you've got this great calling on your life that's far greater than every other aspect of life that you're involved in, to raise up these little ones for the Lord. You've got this great, blessed privilege. And it's difficult at times. You go without sleep, and they've asked the same thing for a hundred times, and you're having to direct them in the right way. Well, you don't need to do any of that on your own strength. You can ask. You can ask for heaven's help. To raise them for Jesus Christ. Or what is it in your life, Christian, this morning? Uh, what is it about this Sermon on the Mount that has so struck you and, and challenged you? You can ask God. Is it somebody difficult at work? And you're very tempted just to, 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 to retaliate. And you've heard this Sermon on the Mount. Uh, about how the Lord Jesus calls us to live, you can ask God for help for every day with that difficult person. There's something in your own life, some old sin. You can seek and you can knock and God says, I have all the resources that you need. Great need? Ask God. And wonderful encouragement. That's the third thing. Just look at these words. Let them grip you this morning. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. And in case we didn't quite get that, the Lord Jesus comes at it from a different angle in verse 8. He says, For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Isn't that a wonderful word there in verse 8? For everyone who asks receives. That's got your name in it, Christian, that word everyone. Whatever it is, you can put your name right in there, Christian. And here's what Jesus is saying to his disciples. Oh, you've got this great calling for you and it's so challenging and you feel it and you, you know you don't have your own resources but you can ask God and everyone who asks receives. Heaven's help is guaranteed, says Jesus, for all of God's people. Broadhouse was a, a great commentator of days past, he wrote these words. One may be a truly industrious man, yet poor in temporal things, but one, not, one cannot be a truly praying man and poor in spiritual things. You may be a truly industrious man and yet have not very much in your bank account, but you cannot be a truly praying man or woman and be poor in spiritual things. You see, the plan of God for you in 2023, Christian, is that you will be all these things of this Sermon on the Mount, that you be as like Jesus Christ as is possible this side of heaven. And we can ask him for all these good things. Isn't that really challenging? 
how much of our praying is asking God, seeking God, knocking for God to give us these things. And yet Jesus is telling his disciples, you can ask with complete confidence and with great expectation. And when we doubt it all, we're to read verses 9 to 11. And we're to think of this amazing picture. Which one of you, if, he, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Well, none of you would do that to your child, would you? To come asking for a breadstick and give them a pencil? No. You give them good things. And our Heavenly Father, he is so different from us. We're evil, Jesus says, by nature, and yet we do these good things for those that we love. How much our Heavenly Father then, who has proven his love in sending Jesus Christ to die for us, how much also will he not then graciously give us all these good things as we ask? I remember about 30 years ago an elderly Christian gentleman speaking to me. He had an issue with his temper. And he had come to a conclusion. He said, that's just how I am. I'm going to be a grumpy old man. Well, I'm sure that he would have had battles right throughout his life if that was a particular issue for him. The Christian is never rid completely of sin. But he could have asked. He could have sought. And he could have not. And when Jesus gives these commands of ask and seeking and knocking, it's written in a tense that says, this will be the ongoing pattern of your life. Every day asking, Lord, give me fresh waves of your strength to be this person you want me to be. You can ask him every day for heaven's help. Jack was a man, I did a Bible study with him and his wife, I'm sure 25 years ago. He wasn't a Christian. And uh, I shared the gospel with him over a few evenings in his home and I can remember coming back to him and Asking him, well, what he thought of it all? And he, that he read the little book that I'd, I'd left for him. Oh, yes, he said. But this, these were his words. He said, I could never live the Christian life. Well, in some ways, actually, Jack was, he was right. He couldn't. And no one can live the Christian life left to themselves. But he was also wrong. Because the Bible says that all who come to Jesus Christ for pardon and for new life, all who believe in him, all who turn from their sin and follow him, that the Holy Spirit comes to live and to dwell within them. And with his presence, there is grace and there's strength and there is power to change. So don't be discouraged today, Christian, about some sin in your life that you battle with. There is heaven's help. There's heaven's pardon for when we stumble. And there's heaven's help for us to grow in grace and be the people that God is calling us to be. Let's stand as we pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, thank you for these verses on prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. They're just what we need, Father. A reminder of heaven's help. Some of us, Lord, as we grow older, see more and more the sin that remains within us. And we feel its weight more and more. Forgive us, Lord, when we don't ask for heaven's help as we should. We ask, Lord, that all of us today, young and old, will be people calling in heaven's help for every day. Father, some of your people have challenges to face in family or work or in their community. Help them to ask and to seek and knock. All of us, Heavenly Father, have 
needs of growing and needs of change. Will you help us in this year to be people who are asking more and seeking more and knocking more that if we're spared to come to another year that will that some of us will not just be a little older looking but that we'll also be looking more like Jesus Christ the one who was the picture of all these things that he called his people to be we pray it in Jesus name and for his sake amen well we're going to sing praise to God from Psalm 86a my apologies about the typo verse 4 is put in twice uh, we're not singing it twice we'll sing it once just incline your ear Lord answer me for I am poor and nothing have that's how someone comes to Christ in the very first place I am poor Lord and I have nothing and I come to you for pardon that's how the Christian keeps coming if nothing, Lord, apart from you, be gracious unto me, O Lord, for all day long to you I cry. Psalm 86a, these six verses, we sing to God's praise. Incline your ear, Lord, answer me. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God, the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen.